Good day. I'm Martin Gago with Market Radius Research. It's Tuesday, January the 10th, and we've got CEO Ashish Malik of B Vectoring Technologies joining us today. B Vectoring, or BVT, is an ag tech company that develops and markets naturally derived biologics for crop protection and crop yield improvement. BVT just announced a commercial agreement with BioSafe Systems to sell BVT's proprietary CR7 biologic into the foliar and soil drench markets in the U.S. with options to expand into other markets. Ashish is joining us to provide some details and insight into the significance of this announcement. But please remember, this is neither recommendation nor investment advice. We're here to, to learn about the news and the company. Ashish. Thanks for joining us today. And why don't you first give us a quick rundown on the news and what it means for BVT? Sure. Thanks, Martin. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, this is very exciting news for us. So, so those of uh, those of you who are familiar with BVT have known us as a company that's delivering products to crops using managed beehive systems, right? Hence the name Bee Vectoring Technologies. But one of the core uh, assets that we have in the companies are CR7 microbial uh, uh, strain. And so what we've actually done here is to show that that product can fit very nicely in more conventional and traditional application methods as well, such as foliar or, or soil apply technologies. So this is the first deal that we have put together where the CR7 product will be sold in non b vectoring uses. So it's actually opening up a whole new area of growth for the company, which we're very excited about. And, and I, I like to clarify terms initially. You, you say it's for foliar and soil drenching. I think soil drenching is kind of self-explanatory. You spray it on the, the ground. Foliar is on is leaf. So you'd spray right. it on the leaves of a right. plant and then right. that would right. help protect it from uh, various, uh, act as a fungicide, correct? It could be, it could be used to help the plant grow healthier. Uh, it could help the, the plant fight diseases, and you're correct, it could be applied to the soil, either through what they call chemigation systems, so you mix it in with the water system, it goes in and, and cleans up the soil and helps the roots of the plant, or it can go on um, through a foliar spray to help the, the, you know, the, the portions, the leaves and the stems that's above the ground as well, fight different diseases and, and generally to, to grow healthier. All right. And as you were saying, you're initially the use of the CR7 was to be delivered through your, your beehive system. Correct. And now, and you were selling that directly, and I guess through some distributors as well, but you, you were selling the, the products and, and the systems. Is this, are you selling the CR7 to uh, the company or is, what, what, how is the kind of commercial arrangement yeah. roughly structured? So, so we don't have um, the traditional. So the way the the way the foliar and soil businesses work is you've got more conventional distribution channels to get to the farmers, right? So these are distribution channels that we have not built because of what we're doing with the bees. We're focusing more on delivering beehives to the growers that don't go through these more traditional distribution channels, retailers and and national distributors. Uh, Biosafe, on the other hand, that's their business. That's their bread and butter, right? So they have a network of uh, the, not only their own sales reps, but also of channel partners to get products for foliar and soil applied uses to the growers. And so our partnership with Biosafe is to sell our CR7 to them, and they will incorporate it into a finished product, with which they will then bring to market through their distribution network. Gotcha. And you're like a biotech company for uh, <laughs> the agriculture sector. Often when biotechs do these sorts of arrangements, they're, they're structured with royalties or product sales. No. Or can you discuss kind of the rough, I presume you can't get into too many details, but right. just sort of the broad structure of the deal. Yeah. So basically the, the way the deal has been put together, and you're right, I, I can't share the details, but the way the deal is put together is that we will we will produce uh, the CR7 through our fermentation, or we may have a third party produce it for us, and that product will be transferred effectively at you know at, at cost of very low margin to the to the uh, to BioSafe in this case, 
Uh, but but the arrangement that's very attractive for BVT is it's a, it you know we get really compensated on a royalty basis of the product that they're selling into the channel, and uh, so that's effectively 100% you know um, gross margin uh, uh, revenue for us. So that's the way the deal has been structured. The royalty rates can be flexed depending on on the price points that you know, that Biosafe is getting in the marketplace. So that allows a lot of flexibility, not only to grow revenue in the future, but also get compensated for higher value products at a higher rate than the, than a lower value product might get compensated. Well, so yeah, as a, if it's royalty based, then if they're able to sell it at a higher price, then you get more, even if it's a fixed percentage, you get more revenues coming to your pocket as they're... Um, yeah, but Martin, what I, I guess what I'm saying is the royalty rate, the percentage we're getting is can be higher. Okay. So it's not a flat percentage. The yeah. percentage is higher uh, because they are making gross margin, more gross margin as well, right? So, yeah. so we're getting a higher percentage royalty on a higher value product than on a lower value product. All right. And the ability and to do that through the deal that we have. All right. And they're developing products based on your CR7. So you're going to ship them product and then they're going to put take it to their labs and dilute it with water or figure out which target markets to so to go after so it's like your baby is off on its own uh, with the help of another organization helping it find new mar channels to market yeah and the, and the and the really cool thing martin is i mean we had we had entered into a an mou an initial arrangement with them about a year ago um, and uh, what transpired during, you know, 2022 is we took a look at which products this product could, <clears throat> which products our CR7 could fit into. And so we've actually identified a drop-in product where they could just drop in the CR7 <clears throat> and develop a market very quickly and develop a product very quickly. And even, you know, we've targeted that we're bringing the product to market or they will bring the product to market in the 2023 season. So that'll be the initial product launch, but then they can also take the product and formulate it into you know, a, a future product where they might make more fungicidal claims and be able to price a higher price, which will require a little bit more time because that may have to go through, like you said, some R&D work. There may be a regulatory step that's involved that might be a longer term. So, this is not a once and done deal. This is really the beginning of a relationship where we see, you know, several products over time that could be all based on the CR7 franchise. So the, the CR7 is already registered with the EPA at this point, and almost more importantly, or very importantly, it's also registered in the California market as well, the largest growing district. Yes. Um, so they're able to leverage that registration for certain products, but if they try to do some other things with it, then they may need to go back for some additional uh, registration or, or regulatory um, yeah, that's approvals. Right. That's right. The, the base CR7 product is what we say. It's got a technical registration. So the active ingredient in and of itself is registered. And it's also very importantly got a residue exception as an active ingredient. And we'll that, remind me, I'll, I'll come back on, on, on the significance of that in a minute here. But that technical registration then allows, you know, Biosafe or whomever to develop an end use registration that much faster, right? Now we've done that, um, uh, at BBT has done that for our B vectoring needs, right? So with the technical registration that we have, Biosafe will be able to get a registration for a foliar spray formulation if they want to develop a very specific product in the future. So they will, in that case, leverage our technical registration. But they can also get into the market right away with an unregistered product, right? And that's the, that's the beauty of the partnership that we have because there's several different you know, um, steps that we could see to grow the business. And I was just going to touch, I was just going to come back to MRL exemption and residue exemption. So what that basically tells uh, the, a grower is that they don't have to test their food crop for chemical residues before they can sell that into the supermarkets or into the retail chain. It's a huge benefit because that's, 
that's the reason why a biological product would be used instead of a chemical. So, so they will be able to, Biosafe will be able to benefit from the MRI exemption that we have on our technical active ingredient. So, so what that's saying is if there is residue on there, it's okay because it's, it's safe okay. for because human it's been, it's consumption. Exactly. It's been deemed by the FDA and the EPA to be safe for human consumption. All right. And um, like it's in their hands now what they're going to develop with it. But th there was a, I think you refer to it as different solutions or products based on CR7. So there could be something for like right now you target blueberries with uh, the bee thing. There could be some crops. It could be even maybe for lawn and home and garden kind of use. It could be for greenhouse applications or cannabis. Like th they could decide whichever markets to, to target, whichever makes the, the, whatever they view as, I get presumably the most economic uh, benefit and sense to them. 100%. So those are all, all the markets you just mentioned are ones that we have talked about with them. So then for them, it's really a question of which are their priority markets, which are the ones that can get into first. And remember, I said that there could be, you know, more than one product that they're developing. So they'll also think about product segmentation, which one do you, you know, position at a certain price point in a maybe a lower value market and which one do you keep for a higher price point and a higher value market? Those are all the, you know, things that their sales and marketing engine are not going to be able to do. You know, Please Ashish, know. when we first yeah. Go ahead. met many years, I don't know how many years, five, six or however long BVT has been up and running. I think my, one of my concerns is along with, I'm guessing a lot of other people, well, B vectoring and blueberries and that is a, a pretty niche market. This really opens it up for almost like the entire, like a much bigger slice of the whole yeah. agriculture market. So I don't, I guess it sort of takes care of the, this is a niche product uh, criticism away from the company. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, Martin. This is a much bigger market. Both markets are very attractive for BVT. Yeah. And what we're excited about, what I'm excited about is this gives us options. This yeah. gives us options on where we focus and we allow our partners to focus, right? And that's what this, you know, we're kicking it off with Biosafe in the US, but obviously we can expand with them in North America, in Mexico and in Canada. And the other thing that I want to point out is that the arrangement with Biosafe is a non-exclusive one. So this is not limiting our ability to have similar relationships with other players, either in foliar or in seed treatment or in other markets, in lawn and garden, you touched on that already. So uh, it's really gonna prove to the industry that CR7 has a right to play even in the more traditional markets but it'll allow us also full flexibility to make deals with other partners as well. All right. Well, that, that all sounds uh, very good. Um, I don't know, kind of hit all the points that I wanted to. Is there anything else you want to highlight? Yeah, I mean, so 2023 is an exciting year for us. I mean, 2022, you know, had its challenges uh, with, uh, with our business, with what happened in blueberries in Georgia earlier last season. We were still able to post some nice, uh, nice revenue growth, uh, and, and you know we know what happened with the macroeconomic environment overall. 2023 with this partnership launches a whole new area of growth for us. Uh, we are expanding geographically. In uh, you know we have already announced our registration submissions in Canada and Mexico in 2022. We're pursuing other regions with the B vectoring uses, but now we have a whole new area of growth, which is just taking our CR7 and what markets can we place that product into and which partnerships can we actually develop. So you'll see more and more news along that uh, uh, to, to come up in the, in the months to come. All right, Ashish, thank you very much for taking the time to bring us up to date on uh, that news. Thank you very much and uh, have a great day. And I look forward to chatting with you again in the near term. Sounds good, Martin. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers.